Hello, noble viewers, and welcome to Planet Earth, our loving home. Today, we'll explore the phenomenon of mass extinction, by which large numbers of species cease to exist. Scientists say that many such events have occurred over the course of Earth's history, and with the acceleration of global warming, they warn that our planet may be headed toward another one. Dr. Peter Ward, a professor of Earth and Space Sciences at the University of Washington in Seattle, USA, and an astrobiologist for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, will share his knowledge. Dr. Ward is an expert in the area of mass extinction and has written more than a dozen books, including the critically acclaimed Under a Green Sky, Global Warming, The Mass Extinctions of the Past, and what they can tell us about our future. Cause mass extinctions is still one of the really interesting and driving questions in geology and biology. If you had asked me that question between 1980 and 1990, I would have told you that uh, asteroid or comet impact on the planet would have been the major or perhaps the only cause of past mass extinction. It really now looks like that was a unique event and that the other 14 mass extinctions are caused by short-term climate change, in almost every case global warming. According to Dr. Ward, changes to the composition of the ocean can initiate a mass extinction. The ocean state that we have now is one where our oceans is mixed. And that means that the composition of water, the chemistry of seawater at the top, is almost identical to that at the bottom. And by chemistry, I don't just mean the atoms making up the water. I mean the entire body of water itself, which includes dissolved gases. Now, gas in this atmosphere, if, if we bring out a new vat of seawater that's been out of gas, that gas sitting here will pull down molecules of oxygen, carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and it will dissolve away. Just like you put sugar in water and stir it, well, gas does the same thing. The amount of oxygen at the surface of the ocean is almost identical to the amount at the deep bottom. So that's the current ocean state. But the second ocean state is there's oxygen at the top, but none on the bottom. The third ocean state, there's not much oxygen anywhere, and hydrogen sulfide is present. Three ocean states. The mass extinctions happen when you move to either of the other ones. Scientific research shows that the greatest mass extinction in Earth's history, the Permian-Triassic extinction, occurred approximately 250 million years ago, at which time 90% or more of the marine species and 70% of land species disappeared. I think in Earth history we see climate changes over time. And we know that some of these climate changes were associated with enormous biological destruction. And how could we believe that the same sort of experience moving into the modern day wouldn't do the same thing? So a bunch of us are looking at past climate to see, could it happen again? The Arctic ice is melting at an unprecedented rate due to global warming. This phenomenon is causing serious concern among scientists, including Dr. Ward. If the Arctic sea ice were to disappear completely, what would the impact be on the world's oceans? There's a lot of current systems in the ocean. What the oceans are trying to do is simply equilibrate heat. For instance, if you boil water in a pot, the burners down below, that hot water will start moving away from the hot spot. The cold water on the top will be pulled down. So you've got this circulation. The oceans are the same. 
the Arctic is cold, the equator is hot. The equator is like the burner. So water that's hot moves up towards the cold, water that's cold moves down towards the hot. And it does so exactly in the same sort of cell, a convection cell. So it's not sideways turning, it's over the top and down below. The seawater absorbs heat, ice reflects it. If we take away ice on our planet, we reduce the reflectance. Where does that new light go? It goes and converts into heat energy. Our planet warms up as we lose the ice. If global warming would warm the tropics relatively the same that it warms the Arctic, there would be no problem. But the tropics are already about as warm as they can be. Even with global warming and more CO2 and greenhouse, they can't get much warmer. But the Arctic sure can. The Arctic can go from zero centigrade all the way up to 40 or 50 centigrade at the highest, but probably 30 at max. So when we have those two temperatures, even close to the same, ocean currents stop. When ocean currents stop, you go from ocean state mixed to ocean state anoxic. When we return, Dr. Ward will further discuss the consequences of stopping ocean currents. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Planet Earth, Our Loving Home, featuring an interview with Dr. Peter Ward, a leading expert on mass extinctions, events where large numbers of species cease to exist. Dr. Ward is a professor of Earth and Space Sciences at the University of Washington in Seattle, USA, and an astrobiologist for NASA. According to his research, without action to halt it, the rapid climate change we are now experiencing may lead to a fundamental change in the chemistry of Earth's oceans, resulting in another mass extinction. The possible stoppage of oceans, great conveyor belt, an enormous circulation pattern that spans the world's seas and plays a major role in regulating Earth's climate, is of particular concern to Dr. Ward. New modeling in Colorado indicates that within the next century to century and a half, we should start seeing the slowing and even cessation of several of these oceanic current systems, thermal hailing systems, conveyor belt systems, starting to shut off. We've seen this happen in the geological past. If we turn off the conveyor belt, sooner or later we have a whole different kind of water on the bottom, water without oxygen. Water on the top still has oxygen, but over time that oxygen less water because you're pumping more and more water down there. It's got to go somewhere. So it's pushed up. As that conveyor belt finally slows down, up comes the stuff. The other thing is that warm water without oxygen weighs less than warm water with oxygen. And so it floats to the surface. And as it does, it kills things. And that is the change of state now. When it hits the surface, you are in state two, the oxygen-free ocean, and then from state two, you will start rapidly move into state three, the hydrogen sulfide ocean. What are the consequences of living things coming into contact with hydrogen sulfide? Hydrogen sulfide is a poisonous gas. It is produced by rotting material. It also comes out of volcanics and it can be produced by microbes. Bacteria, as a byproduct of their respiration and living, produce hydrogen sulfide. Very small quantities of hydrogen sulfide would kill us in this room very quickly, 200 parts per million. Less hydrogen sulfide in the air than there is carbon dioxide would kill us. A tiny bit of H2S. Our noses are attuned to several parts per million. We can detect it. And it is because this gas is so poisonous, the human body knows if you smell that, run. Don't stay around, it can't kill you. At present, hydrogen sulfide in seawater has been detected in several regions around the world. 
the most widely known case is off the coast of Namibia. The country's coastal marine ecosystem has been severely damaged by the gas. Periodically, millions of fish die because of the dissolved hydrogen sulfide in the seawater. It's happening. The country in Namibia, off Africa, is already producing hydrogen sulfide to the surface. We know that. On the seacoast of Namibia, you can just walk along it and smell it. I've done this. Underwater plants can also succumb to hydrogen sulfide. The seagrass that once flourished in the waters off the San Juan Islands near the coast of Washington, USA, is another case in point. Seagrass is the place where young animals go to be born and to live their early lives. Most fish end up in seagrass because it affords protection. Seagrass is not germinating in the San Juan Islands now where there's hydrogen sulfide. It stops the seeds from germinating. So no seagrass, no protection of the little guys, no protection of the little guys, species go extinct. In his book, Under the Green Sky, Dr. Ward describes a world with purple oceans and green skies, the result of hydrogen sulfide filled seas. Well, no one alive has ever seen it, but we think that the oceans would be a rich purple color simply because the bacteria that produce, break down hydrogen sulfide are purple, they're called purple sulfur bacteria and they would stain the water purple. In fact, there are areas of the Black Sea, the ocean is purple. So that's our world, purple oceans, probably a green sky. The hydrogen sulfide leaking up in the atmosphere would give it a yellow tinge. If you add yellow to blue paint, what do you get? Green. Certainly no one wants to see such a strange, toxic, and lifeless world. How can we avoid the scenario? We need to stop climate change. In addition to his suggestions of driving less and avoiding air travel, Dr. Ward also has the following recommendation for cooling the earth. Stop eating meat. It is so unbelievably inefficient to be using green energy in plants to be fed to cows. Raising meat on farmland is crazy. We need to keep those resources and we should be feeding people, the vast majority of people on this planet should be eating greens and nothing but, getting their protein only from plant material. Raising of meat, besides just the ethical questions of the mistreatment, it is certainly not energy efficient to be raising cows in Costa Rica, for instance, where you cut down a rainforest, make it a short-term grassland, and then feed it to McDonald's. For more about Dr. Peter Ward, please visit earthweb.ess.washington.edu. Under a Green Sky and other books by Dr. Ward, available at Amazon.com. We are sincerely grateful to Dr. Peter Ward for kindly sharing his scientific insights on mass extinctions and wish him the best in his future research in this area. May humankind awaken at this critical moment in history and change to an organic vegan diet to save our planet. Thank you for your kind company on today's edition of Planet Earth, Our Loving Home. Up next is enlightening entertainment after noteworthy news. May our lives be imbued with the divine love of heaven. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash PE.